This presentation is brought to you by the City of Greensboro's Economic Development and Business Support Office. I talk to so many young people, whether they're trying to start a business or trying to find a job, and it's so much more than the money. And you've got to put your thumb on the scale for your quality of life and what's that worth to you, you know. And um, so I would say to find something that feeds you, that you do. If, if, you're, if you're just doing something because you think that it's, something you can do and do well, but you hate it. You know, you're never going to be as good at that as something that you love. So whether it's a job or your own business, you really need to find something you enjoy because most of the time you're going to be successful in that. It doesn't mean people don't make successes of themselves and things they hate, but I have to think that takes a toll on you inside. If every day you go there, you're just like, I hate this. And that's not to say, there have been times in my business when there have been things that, I, like. I hate RFPs and putting those proposals together. And I hate managing people. I, you know, that's the, it's a nightmare. You know, um, the drama, <laughs> I just let somebody else do that. You know, you know yourself. You know what you love and what you don't. And stay true to that. Find something you love. The best thing you can do for yourself, regardless of whether you go to work for somebody else or work for yourself, is to know what you are all about. You know, you're going to know that better than anybody else. So don't let people put you in a place where you're not going to thrive because you're not going to be happy, which is going to bring a lot of other things that are not going to be good your way. Take an inventory from time to time and just say, Okay, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'm not so good at that. Know yourself and then put yourself in the right places. So here I left an ad agency that I'd managed, which my ego was well served. But you know what? It didn't matter. I had children to support, myself to support. I was divorced. So I was like, I've got to make a living. So I went back inside me and said, what do you do best, Judy? Well, I had gone to GTCC and gotten a degree in secretarial science. They don't even have that now. They don't even have secretaries now, right? Okay, so you have to use your imagination. But that, but that, that, was, that was somebody that was good at typing and shorthand, which I love still to this day. It's a great note-taking tool. But uh, I knew I could do clerical work and do it well, and there was nothing shameful about it. It was good, honest, hard work. A lot of people, when they're looking around for how they can solve a problem for somebody, they say, oh, well, I could do that, but who wants to do that, right? But if, it, if it's something you don't mind doing, which I didn't mind doing that. I knew I was a good letter writer. I knew that I had a good rapport with people. I knew that I could work hard and I could do busy work that somebody else didn't want to do. So I went to Volvo, and they had been an ad agency client. And I asked them, I said, do you, you, I know you get a lot of leads because I had done campaigns. Now, leads used to come in. Here's another stretch for you. Okay, go back. <laughs> you won't remember this either, but leads used to come in as a result of the bingo cards in the back of magazines. So if you had an interest in something, you would circle a readership card, and you would send that. The publication then would send labels out to the manufacturers and say, these people have inquired about your products. Well, they would get tons of those. They would go to trade shows and get lots of business cards. They would do direct mail and get lots of response. But after a while, they sat in a corner and they began to be like a dead body and decomposing. It was like, what did we, how did we do on that campaign? And they'd say, well, good, but nobody here wants to do that. Handling those, I mean, we got nobody that wants to type those letters and send out that literature. So I said, well, let me do that for you. I'll do that for you. And he said, well, how much will you charge? And I said, I don't know. I don't have any idea. He said, um, I said, how many leads do you get? That seemed to me a logical place to start. And he said, I don't know. So he called down to his people in the, that were doing that when they got around to it, and they said 35,000 leads.
We get about 35,000 leads a year. And I said, okay, a dollar a lead, I'm there. You have to look at the cost of what's involved in your business venture. Uh, and, you know, that's, sometimes that's a problem. You can't get past, you know, I don't have the capital. There are a lot of good groups around Greensboro that will fund a good idea, kind of the shark tank thing. But I didn't really have any money at all. And so I had to pick something, too, that didn't cost right. a lot to do. And in 1989, I took my real first chance, a real chance at um, a risk, I guess would be a better word. Um, I went and got an SBA loan for a quarter of a million dollars. And I'm telling you, that is a scary thing. If you've ever gotten money from the government that you got to pay back, I thought I was going to lose Cindy and Dave because, you know, you put your children, <laughs> you know, everything's put at risk, let me tell you. And you know that it's so tied up that if you had a buyer for something you owned, it would be gone, the buyer would be long gone by the time they released you. So it's kind of a scary thing to do. But I wanted to bid Syngenta's fulfillment. And they said you cannot bid the fulfillment if you do not have it completely set up, ready to do. And that meant renting an 18,000 square foot facility, getting racks set up. I hired a warehouse manager. I bought computer systems, a warehouse management computer um, program, all betting on the fact that I could get that bid. And I did that in May, and the landlord put the money, put the lease on the back end, and let me have that rent free for three months and moved them in in August. And I'm telling you, it was, the, it was a scary thing. You know, you just say, well, okay, I'd lose my car, I'd lose my little townhouse, you know. But fortunately, blessed. And some of the things that have happened to us to cause us to grow have been just things that happen. For instance, in about 1989, 1990, people got rid of... It was downsizing was the thing to do. We're going to shrink this company. We're going to not have administrative assistance. We're going to make everybody answer their own phones. So what happened was people would get a ton of voicemails that they would hide behind and they would never get to a human being. It didn't take long for, for companies to say, this, this, we're getting too many complaints. Our customers have to reach a human being. So they, they came to us. And, you know, there's scripture that says, if you're faithful with a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. That really applies in business. If you really do your job, people will reward you. And they'll say, you know, I trust you. When you're out there selling yourself, whether it's something you're doing for somebody or if you're working for somebody, there are two things that people make decisions in your d direction because of. They like you and they trust you. Well, sometimes success is a matter of timing. And when timing, you know, when opportunity meets readiness, as they say, that's when you have success. So I took that program and I went to large manufacturers all around, just around me. We have a lot of large manufacturers in this area. We really do. So I went to Hatteras Yachts, they're gone now to Newburn, but they were there. Karistan Rugs, which has now gone to Mohawk, but I have them still, okay? Uh, I went to Sibagagi, which is now Syngenta. I went to Burlington Industries. I went to all those large companies. Gil Barco, they said, yes, I need that. We need that. Isn't that just music to your ears? And I did along the way take on things that were just like, I took on a project for R.J. Reynolds one time that I thought was absolutely going to be my undoing. So I would tell you, don't outgrow your clothes, okay? Make sure it fits you because um, we had camouflage, camouflage t-shirts running out our ears. We were fulfilling 250,000 and we were, had grocery carts going across a parking lot, taking them from one building. It, I'm not kidding. It, it just about did me in. <laughs> But, you know, it was one of those learning experiences where I said, mm, maybe I'm not ready for that yet. Maybe we need to grow a little bit. So don't get ahead of yourself with your growth. Make sure you're ready for it and that you um, can, can supply that need without putting yourself or other people at risk or your other clients at risk, which is, which is pretty big. 
We all have products. We all have services. I'd be foolish to stand here and tell you that you could create something that's never been thought of. Try it. Come up with a name for a company and Google it, and I guarantee you, you'll be like, I can't believe they have that name. Mm -hmm. You know, anything. I mean, it's just, it and everything is out there, and so it's getting harder and harder to be unique. But you are unique. You are unique. One time I was struggling to meet competition when I worked at the ad agency, and my boss said, sat me down and said, you know, they can compete with your price. They can compete with your service but they can't compete with your mind. So be creative. Nobody knows what's in here, right? I truly believe that you should always have more dreams than memories, okay? And when you get to the point that you don't have as many dreams as memories, maybe you're getting old and your dreams just need to be bigger than your memories. But you should always have dreams. And aren't we fortunate that we live in a country where our dreams can perhaps become reality. You're in a, a time right now when if you've got a product, you can look huge without being huge. You know, it's kind of like that internet dating thing. You know, you're like, oh, this is you. <laughs> Some of you go to the building, you say, hmm, okay, different, uh, right? You can make your business look big and impressive, even if it really isn't big, and you're waiting for it to be impressive. I will challenge you to keep your integrity. It's so important. It's so important. You know, like Cher said in a song, we, eventually we all sleep alone. I mean, you know, we got to be accountable, don't we, for what we do in life, and we got to hold on to our integrity.